What up, guys? Oh, yeah. Welcome back. Wow, I have a really deep voice. You sound like you've been smoking your whole <laughs> life. <laughs> no, I'm sick. I'm coming from a flu. I know. We're both sick. But welcome back to another episode of Bailcast. And today, we got three sponsors. Oh. One is OpenFit. Yes. Third Love. And also, Barbell Brigade. Hey. Woohoo! So we've been reading the comments, and um, uh, it's really, really, what's the word to me? Um, uh, I really appreciate it that you guys... <laughs> Why do you make fists when you appreciate things? No, because I'm just talking from the heart. Okay. And I really appreciate it that you guys uh, find comfort and solace in us sharing about our relationship. Did I use the word solace correctly? I was very impressed that you used the word solace. Okay, hopefully I used it correctly, but pretty much um, <laughs> when we share our relationship with people and we're vulnerable about it and we try to be as open and honest and try to give. I try not to be open at all. Really? Yeah, you bring that out in me. Fine. So I do a really good job of doing job. that. Um, you're welcome, people. Yeah. Um, but I, I just want to be able to share relationships that I wish people told me about it. And since I grew up in a very cold, ice cold Asian family, like I never really saw that much romance. Yeah. So to be able to kind of share and then everyone reading all the comments and everyone's like, oh, man, it's just like that. Thank you for normalizing my craziness. I think, man, I think we're all crazy. You know, I don't Hell think yeah, we're all crazy. I don't really think there's a quote unquote normal. No, I think if there is a normal, they're probably the craziest because they're all bottled up on yeah, the inside because huh? they're just there's no outlet for them. Yeah. So I would like to talk more about our relationship. Take it away, Gio. Oh, <laughs> that's a subtle alley huh? Yeah, that's alley uh, yeah. I think what's funny is um, Papa and I really try to keep these things organic. Um, and we let the comments, I mean, not the comments, we let the topic just kind of uh, incept itself into our brain. And then therefore, it just kind of trickles out of our mouth into conversation. Yeah. Um, but then for today's podcast, we were like, well, what are we going to talk about? And then Papa was like looking at everyone's comments and reading stuff. And then he was like, cool, got it. And then he was like, oh, shit, what are we talking about? I'm like, I thought you had it. He goes, nope, but I'm going to give you a subtle alley-oop. And there you you got it, folks. There was a subtle alley-oop. Yeah, either Not that or another comment that I read was you guys want to hear about how we start businesses and projects and stuff and then plan long term. And that sounded kind of boring. But if you guys are really interested in that kind of stuff, let us know in the comments below. and Maybe we will talk about it. I don't know why that sounds so boring to me. I think maybe I'm just so it sounds heady. Maybe, maybe I, I'm just so fascinated about just like relationships, whether they be romantic or just platonic. Yeah. You know, I, I it's just it's so interesting to me because maybe it's just something that I um, what's interesting about it. I just find it. I just find the dynamic of two different people, regardless yeah. if they're related or not. Yeah. Um, how they get along, like how they don't get along, um, how they overcome it and then get along again. I think because I just never really felt like I had any really solid, solid relationships in my life. You know who I think fucked all of us? Who? I think um, all those uh, children's books that we read as kids, like fairy tales, it always ends with happily ever and they live exactly. happily ever after right all of those all of those children's books that you read kindergarten first grade second grade so i think it it sets this expectation up that once you overcome some major obstacle there's this cruise control and i'm beginning to realize that i wouldn't be surprised if you asked couples that have been together for a long time like grandparents like 50, 60 years, maybe even 70 years, that they probably thought of divorce maybe three or four times, Ooh. not just once. I need more old people in my life. I don't have that many. <coughs> yeah, I don't. I wouldn't even know who to ask. Because, like, you know, people change, right? And I think the things that keep people together during a relationship is, um, of course, you're going to grow as a person, and the goal is to be able to grow together. Right. But the minute you guys feel like you're growing apart, that's when people start questioning, oh, should we be together? So like a very young instance of that is like, you know, when people they are in high school yeah. and they've been dating junior, senior year, all of a sudden Amy got into an East Coast school and then uh, Brandon. That's the premise for every chick flick. Yeah. And Brandon got into a home, a local school. Yeah. What do we do now? You know, and then how are we going to make this long distance work? So are they going to grow apart? Are they going to grow together? And I, I don't think 
that there's an end all be all like oh yeah after we got married i think even after you get married you have to continuously work on it yeah so like i think it kind of sucks to set up that expectation because even you were telling me that your or your mom was telling me that her and her her and your dad had hella problems they just did a good job of not letting it pour out all over the place yeah but it was something they had to keep working on all the time right no yeah you're correct they did have to work on it and and we constantly work on it um i i guess like just growing up you kind of wished that or you think right like kind of going back to and they lived happily ever after like you hope that that's how it happens and you think that's kind of how it happens because you're just not an adult yet so you don't know any better um and if you were fortunate enough to have like a childhood the way that I did where um, it appeared that just my parents weren't like super lovey-dovey, but it just seemed like they had enough amount of affection toward each other for me to know that they still loved each other and that there there was mutual respect. Um, And they were just doing adult things now, which is mom goes to her job, dad goes to his, his job, mom comes home, takes, you know, these are her duties, dad comes home, these are his duties, go to sleep, wake up, repeat. Like, that's what it was. So I just, that was my model to follow. So I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, that's just what happens. And then my other relationship model would be whatever relationships I had with my girlfriends or friends. And at that, you don't really work on it too much, you know? Because, like, at some, like, it's still, um, your, even your best friends, there's still some level of, like, you don't show them your asshole completely, right? Like, what was your ideal, like, growing up, did you have, like, your childhood idea of you know a lot of a lot of girls growing up they're like oh my 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 dream my dream like uh idea of romance is this guy that comes and sweeps me off my feet have the most beautiful wedding and then like um i'm at home with the kids and then like i pet my dogs and he goes out and work like did you have a ideal relationship my ideal was relationship was my parents (laughs) You know, like um, my mom, I knew my mom respected my dad and loved him, but my mom would always vent like all the time about like my dad's absence, you know, for certain events or um, his lack of like compassion or empathy, um, how he was just kind of oblivious to her feelings, you know, like, yeah. like growing up, I, I would hear her venting all the fucking time. Yeah. So, and I never hear him venting. Yeah. Like I just, he, he's just like whistling all the time you know like just kind of living life um but my ideal was them you know it was like oh okay like and then you watch shows that kind of reinforces that interesting that reinforces that too most people don't have a dream that's so grounded you know what i mean like like some people that come from the most broken of homes (laughs) they still want like the the pure cinderella like the white the 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 glass slippers like they want butterflies I don't think I, I always saw a relationship as something that um, I don't know broken was not broken I didn't see it as broken but I just saw it as like something that I didn't want to fully invest myself in like I didn't believe in like love at first sight I didn't love like I didn't have like I didn't believe in like Prince Charming and shit I was just like um, Damn, okay you grumpy since you were a kid Really, I'm sure it was my environment that shaped that for yeah. sure, and just my experiences. So when you watch up. Disney movies, you're like, "This is bullshit." No, I, I mean, I knew how to escape and and consider that. Oh, that's a Disney world. I, it's just not like that's. This is my world. Oh, let me escape from my world, and now I'm in Disney world, that's and crazy. I would enjoy that. Then what do you think makes a lot of girls tie them and Disney as one? Like uh, when I hear so really? many, well, so who, none of my girlfriends tied Disney into one. For example, Tiff's one of them. Okay, give me an example. Her wedding, like her wedding of what she wished her quinceanera was, what she wished her prom was, is all manifested in her her wedding, which uh, there's nothing wrong with it. People have their own tastes. Yeah. But Tiff represents like 90% of the girls that I know who want their wedding to be like this. They want a certain type of proposal. They want a certain type of ring. The the flowers got to match the the little details on the dress. It's a the, uh, there's a coffee whatever themed wedding. But that's a tradition now that you're talking about. Exactly. But that's not a realistic romance. Like that's very Disney like. It's a very Disney like tradition. Like this 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 whole branded packaged type of I don't of think love. it's a Disney like tradition. I think marriage itself is just a tradition of bringing your families together, you know? I'm and not then, talking about the event. Oh. I'm talking about the whole concept of romance and love. Like, 
uh, the shining white knight on the white horse that comes and like saves me from my perils. Like that. Like there's a lot of girls that I know. They're they they're not looking for. Okay, who's that? Who's that slightly overweight, like blue collar guy <laughs> that has a pretty stable union job and has great benefits? Nobody wants that. Exactly. Nobody wants but mediocre. You, but you would want that. I don't. I don't want that. Because you, you said you want. You want. No. Your, your idea of romance were your parents, and that's no. so grounded. Yeah, because it's something that worked. But then for me, I'm like, I don't want something that's unrealistic. Like my my life bubble was so little. Yeah. I didn't really have much to go off of. And when you're asking me this question, I'm answering it as someone that's like, I was maybe like, maybe junior high, maybe high school. Yeah, but that's what I'm get, that's what I'm getting at. It's like, how were you so realistic? So this is most girls, right? Most girls. I've kind of always just been this way. Most girls I know, especially in college, they go to the clubs. Looking for the guy in the express dress shirt or Armani shoes or yeah. whatever, right? They go, oh, cool. That's my knight in shining armor. Even our friends June and Dan met that way. Later, they find out, okay, this guy doesn't have the, enough money to afford a $300 dress shirt. And that whole Disney image gets shattered. And then they're like, oh, shit. I guess I'm with this guy now. And then they go back to ground zero. And they're always like, but you lied to me. I, I don't know. Everything you, you keep painting, though, is something like, like, is like a girl that's in some sort of dire need to be rescued. No, no, no. So what I'm just saying, the girls that I've met when I talk to them, yeah, they all have this type of wedding. That's why the wedding industry is huge. It's yeah. banking off these visions. No, well, I don't know. I think we're talking about two different things then, because then my ideal of a of a of a relationship, like for example, our wedding. Yeah. Both of us barefoot in Hawaii. We spent five grand. Right. We spent 10 grand plus flights. If uh, <laughs> if if you ask, if you survey most 13 year olds right now and you go, hey, um, any of you guys down to get married on grass and spend five grand? Everyone's going to throw up. You're shitty at marketing. No, everyone's going to fucking no, throw, no one will throw up. up. If you explain it the no, way it really you went want, down. You want your knight in shiny armor? Do you want armor? a mountain in the background and this beautiful smog-free fucking crystal blue sky? Across from you is this beautiful fucking ocean that you can see for miles and miles away. Big open. Like People would be like, yeah, I'm down with that. No? No. What the fuck? Most girls, if I go to any junior high right now and this little girl never dies and most girls, even when they become older, you take 30 of these chicks, throw them in 30 individual rooms, and I tell them to write A to Z what their ideal wedding is, the Venn diagram is going to be like like 90% overlap. That's wild. Everyone's going to want I this knight in shining armor, yeah. some sort of limousine, corset, bouquet type of thing. Like yeah. we, we just went to our, our buddy Ren's wedding. It's like every other wedding because everyone has the same vision. And so I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like how... It's so interesting to me that you never even had this Disney wedding like vision. Like you went straight for the Armani suit. Give me the guy with the Dickies outfit. No, I don't want the Dickies outfit. I definitely want the Armani, Armani suit. But um, I think I just have I just have different expectations. Maybe it came from like my mom's venting where I'm like, ooh, I don't want to feel that way. Or, oh, she got a point there. And I'm kind of just taking my notes, you know, because I I know for my circle of friends, at least in high school and just a lot of girls that I hang out with, um, they couldn't wait to be 18, 21, you know, and start clubbing and doing that. And for me, I re I vividly remember my 15th birthday approaching and then it hot like I, it was my 15th birthday and I was like, fuck, I want to stop growing here. Like I wanted to stop my life at 15 because I just knew everything past 15. I don't know why I felt this way. I was such a fucking weird kid, but I just knew everything past 15 was going to be a bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cause I'm that's like, funny. Because I'm like, I got to get a fucking job now. Like, I can't just kick it in school and like hang out with my friends. Like some shit's about to get real. Like, I don't know what that was, but I just, again, looking at my, my older sister, my brother, my mom and stuff, and there's the adults around me. I'm like, damn, they look like they fucking suck. Like they're in a shitty spot. I think I just found the actual topic of this podcast. What is it? It's is clubs the best place to meet your significant <laughs> other? Because uh, you know how you're saying like everyone couldn't wait like to go to the clubs. Yeah. Type of club. Yeah. Like okay. everyone. And I agree. Like I think guys and girls 
for some reason, everyone thinks that they're going to meet their dream person at the club. I don't think they think that. I think. I then think why are they, they searching think, so hard there? I think. Uh, I think. They, I think people are just trying to fuck. Really, I think they think they're gonna find their soulmates like at a church or something. If they are just trying to fuck, then why are they so um, so many barriers to fucking? I think people. I think people just want to fuck, but they're guilty. They feel guilty that they just want to fuck, so they just hide it behind like dancing and pretending yeah. to get to know someone. Right. Right. I see. Right. Because that's the but part. But you would look for girls at clubs. I would never look for a guy at a club. No, I was just there to hang out. What I was. Fuck. I was trying to, but no one want to fuck me. <laughs> what I, but what I was actually looking for to like, so like, for me, I know if you want to catch saltwater fish, you got fish in the ocean. Right. You want freshwater fish, you fish in the lake, right? Yeah. So for me, like the type of girls that I was trying to get at, um, that's why I joined so many school clubs when I was in college, because I'm like, I got to surround myself. I don't want to. I don't want to find like those typical ABGs or like people that are just alcoholic. Asian baby girls. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want girls that are like that. Like, like I want someone very career driven, ambitious, and has their priorities straight. So I would try to lurk in the library and stuff. Ew. Like that's what I was trying that's to do. Very smart though. And then so I was so like every girl that I talked to in college, they were of a certain caliber, because I don't want to have that. Like what I see time and time again with the regular chick, they go, oh, man, I see that guy. He's so hot. He's six feet tall with that really nice fade and that nice dress shirt. Oh, man, he's so swagged out. And then they talk a little bit and then this fool can barely speak English. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? Why is this fool so dumb? And then yeah. with limited vocabulary. Yeah. And then uh, it gets shattered. I'm like, why even set myself up for that expectation? Yeah, like, maybe that's just what people have access to because I dated that guy. Not a club guy, but I dated the I dated. <laughs> yeah. I dated the guy that like was dumb. I for sure dated a dumb guy. How did guy. you how did that even happen? Um, it was just the access of people that I had. But it wasn't a turn off to you? Oh yeah, well I mean that's why I'm not with them. No, but like how did so how many days did you go on? Oh man, we were together for three years. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's what I mean. Like why didn't you shut it the reason why I my... just I so this is what's crazy. Like so the distance of like travel that I had from my house, which is in fucking East LA, yeah, um, was just my house in East LA to Elac. Like I couldn't really explore outside of these parameters. Like I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to date. I wasn't allowed to go out. I wasn't allowed to do any of that. But you're at least at Cal State LA. No, I'm talking about East LA. I, I know. wasn't there yet. Oh, you weren't there. So no. you dated this guy for three years when you're in East LA. Yeah. And what school did you go to? Elac. So you went to ELAC. Yeah. I mean, there's still like a math department at ELAC. They're, yeah, but do you see what those guys look like? Ugh. But they're way <laughs> smarter than whatever dummy yeah, you're I with. I mean, I clearly didn't care about smarts and I wanted looks and oh, like okay, adventure okay. and fine, I then. wanted I wanted um, my version of what there's I think a man is. There's probably a backpacking department at ELAC too, a camping department with a couple of adventurers in there that might have been smarter. Probably, but they probably didn't have game. So you're looking for guys with game. Um, I guess I was, yeah. I and see. he didn't even have that much game. I don't even know how we got together. <laughs> yeah, <Damn>, that guy <laughs> scored. Wait, how did just it, honestly, lucky. I really don't even remember how we got together. It's been fucking forever. But yeah, he was he wasn't the brightest. He had a heart of gold. He would like do anything for me, right? Would um, you would you say you're one of those that like start a relationship like emotions first? Is that how you think he like bagged you? Uh, emotions for yeah, I'm always the emotions first. So when describe this guy when you first saw him, were you like, oh man, I can't even remember to be honest. Really? Yeah, you're t you're asking me to go back when I was 18. I'm yeah. 35. <laughs> that's, a, that's a minute. <laughs> like I can't even years. remember. Yeah, I can't even remember oh, okay. how we even met. But um, I just remember like, so we were we were to we I, we may have made the three year mark. I probably broke up right before the three year, but you know the first six months, and then I can't go out that much, so my relationships go a lot slower than anyone else my age at that at, at that time, or even at this time, right? Because at eighteen, I think you're going out with your girlfriend like every single day. Some people start moving in together. Like yeah. for me, I would probably see him every day, but at school for like an hour or two, you know. So my yeah. shit's going slow. I see. So a regular relationship, six months. Texting every day or no? Yeah, 
maybe talking on the phone every day, but but then it's um, one of the keypads where it's like yeah, only one through nine, and exactly. you have to press nine like three yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, it was the Nokia, like it wasn't even a flip phone yet, because yeah. that. Um, so my six months in a relationship at that time was probably two years for someone else. So yeah. it's going really, 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 really slow. Yeah, but um, I just I, like I was just seeking someone that was, you know, grounded, humble. Um, like not a promiscuous person, not hasn't been around the block. I mean, I guess same thing. Um, was very respect respectable. Um, and this guy was all those things. He was. But he was just a tool. Um. Yeah, he was kind of dumb. He was dumb, but he was so nice. Like he was liked by everyone. Like everyone loved him. How did you know had he was no dumb? enemies? I mean, you just talked to him, you know. And there, like, I just, I just started seeing my, like, my conversations just kind of like throw him back a little bit like my thoughts would just kind of be like he'd be like oh wow that's interesting never thought of that i'm like you never think of these things that's crazy yeah well, what was something like that would throw him off i don't remember now specifics but i mean he was just someone that like grew i could tell you some specifics of mine oh really yeah no i don't remember damn I, you have a good memory yeah i have a pretty good memory i don't want to waste my brain space on things that don't matter anymore. i can't even help it i just have like the, give me an example I, have, I just have a premium hard drive that oh, I can't fuck. even forget stuff. My shit's a little bit bootleg, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, like uh, I think for <laughs> for me, I, I go into relationships very logic heavy first. Oh, fuck. I mean, I mean, obviously there's because I know that the emotion's gonna be there because you can't help it, right? Like yeah. you see someone that's hot, you're yeah. just like my logic bang, is not there. Like you're just you're just infatuated. There's so I know there's gonna be an extreme amount of that. So I'm like, okay, as as drunk as people get on their first impressions. I have to go to our <laughs> first, our first uh, sponsor. Yeah, we got a little bit carried away on this one. I know. So our first sponsor is brought to you by Open Fit, and I think this is super cool. Anything that is fitness, I can get behind because you know we both own a gym, and I'm all about fitness, and I don't think there is a right way to do fitness and a wrong way to do fitness there's a I safe think and an unsafe way there's safe That's and unsafe it. but i feel like you got to find what works for you so whether that is being a power lifter like us or if it's martial arts or if it's just walking stretching around walking around the block walking your dogs it, anything but i i do think we're all animals so we all got to have physical activity but what i love about open fit is open fit is a streaming service so for those of you guys who get kind of intimidated with gyms you're like oh man i go in here's a bunch of strangers i don't know i gotta make new friends again i'm only gonna be in here for like 30 minutes why do i gotta meet everybody you don't have to do do that or worry about any of that you can work out in the comfort of your own home so what is open fit open fit takes all the complexity out of losing weight and getting fit it's a simple streaming service that allows you to work out from the comfort of your living room in as little as 10 minutes a day and you can access this anywhere all you need is your phone a laptop roku tablet anything like that and there's a bunch of different trainers and classes let me give you guys a couple examples just so you can see what they offer so for example they have this thing called uh tough Munner. Tough mutter, tough mutter, T minus thirty. So this is a training program from four-time tough mutter champion Hunter McIntyre, and it's a thirty-day program designed to crush your tough mutter event, or if you're training for a five k or anything like that. So for those of you guys who have a certain goal, like oh, I always wanted to do a five k, I always wanted to do a Spartan race or tough mutter, well you can do this, and the, these workouts are thirty minutes in your living room. You don't even have to leave. Another one is um. 600 seconds so it's a 10 minute workout that is extremely action-packed which is why it's 600 seconds and uh you go from doing uh you could choose from 42 high intensity workouts of every single wow. type and all of these are like 30 day programs and there's also a yoga one so as you can see they have programs of all sorts and you can find something that interests you because to me uh what's more important than what works for someone else is finding something that interests you because if it interests you, you're down to go the next level yep. and then challenge yourself a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And so uh, I highly recommend Open Fit. And, uh, uh, and you could use the code BAIL. So right now, Open Fit, there's a 30-day challenge. 
and you get a special 30 day free trial membership to open fit where if you where you can lose up to 15 pounds in 30 days if you text bell that's b e a w to 30 30 30 and you'll get full access to open fit all the workouts and nutrition are completely free just text b e a w to 30 30 30 and that's a pretty short commitment if you had that goal of losing 15 pounds, I would say sign up for it. Yeah, it's only four weeks. 15 pounds, 30 days, that can completely tra completely transform the way that you look. Yeah, it only takes a month for you to really start seeing a difference in your body. Just stay consistent and you see it. It literally takes 30 days and you really, really start seeing. Even in two weeks, you'll start seeing a difference. And what's dope is uh, I think that's when you actually get some momentum. You see a little bit of change yep. and you're like, ooh, I think I could do this for two months, three months, four months, five yep. months. And yep. then pretty soon, all of a sudden, you turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, and you're sexy as fuck. Yeah. Okay, what were you saying, baby? Well, I was talking about how uh, I uh, yeah, go in logic heavy first. Yeah. So um, uh, there's this one chick that you knew I was dating. And because uh, I remember we went on a couple of double dates, uh, you and her past oh, boyfriend. Oh, yeah, she was really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> From when you said. So she was super fun, though. Super fun, and she's one of those types that. How long? How long were you guys dating? Probably like three weeks. Yeah, no shit. Everyone's super fun at that time. Someone's jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that was coming. Someone's keep talking jealous. about how this chick's. I'm fucking fun, okay? Say I'm fun. Say it right now. Say I'm fun. I'm fucking insecure. You're say super it. fun. Thank you. She's super tall too. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> fine. Hell no, I saw her. <laughs> she's super my, fun my at three <laughs> at three weeks oh fuck my off Becky is so jealous. fuck off all right awesome. i'm fucking fun <laughs> awesome. yeah so like um no she was really fun and she's one of those people that like i mean we have friends like this that it doesn't seem like nothing could ever get them down they're just happy <laughs> yeah. all the time yeah we have a friend like that and uh the part that really made a mark on me then i was like oh like this is so dumb that i don't even think i could get a bone anymore is uh she, she was studying for a test i was studying for a test and then it was like finals week and then she was like um oh yeah uh, I was, oh how'd you do on your econ test she's like oh i think i did pretty good and i'm like oh what's good and she's like i think i got a c and i'm like <laughs> what the fuck a c is good to you like to me i just wow, want people to be you're so asian no dude. i just want people to be a c i just oh. want people to be i don't care what people achieve What's more important to, to me is their perspective on it. You know what I mean? Like if they if they got an A and then if they're like um, and they're still pissed at themselves, I'm like, damn, overachiever. But a C, that's just regular. But for her to hold a C like it's a gold medal, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, I can't. I, I, re I really can't be with you. So I just bam, done. Yeah. And, that, and that's how because I'm so logic heavy. That's how fast I can end relationships. Well, I think it's logic heavy, but it's just your your standards of um, what it is that you seek in a partner are different. Like for me, I wanted heart. I want a lot of heart. Yeah. You know, excuse me. I think I'm a cough. <coughs> so um, anything that's broken in me, I always want to find in someone else. Right. Yeah. I think that's just what we all kind of do. Yeah. And I value that. So I value a lot of like. Um, like fr like bonds with friends and stuff. I value a lot of like um, tightness with family. I value um, just having a soft heart. Like, uh, why do you like me? Then I'm not tight with my family. You're not, but I met you in a different circumstance, which was through a homie circle. And I still and wasn't tight with my family. Everyone was really tight there, uh, so I saw okay. that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So ours is a little bit different. And then I just saw how. I mean, are you trying to get compliments? What the fuck? Trying to get what? Are you trying to get compliments? What the fuck? <laughs> no, I just want to know what's happening. I want the truth. I love that. I want to give them the truth. <laughs> I love every time we laugh. We sound like we fucking like po uh, smoked a pack of cigarettes before this because we both have a bunch of phlegm in our throat because we're getting over this cold. But yeah, um, yeah. So he he fit the criteria and all that. Like he had a great heart. Like he wasn't one of those guys that was always like talking about sex with his boys and shit. Like however he was with me, he was with his friends and like it. He was just like an open book type thing. But then it, I, it, the moment I started going like, oh man, you're really dumb and like unmotivated and stuff was just like, I had to do everything for him. Like I, as much as I pushed myself to make my life better, to study harder, to get more money, to, you know, work and to try to find my own car, you know, like things that 18 year olds really think about. Um, I was pushing him just as hard, but he was just more like, like kind of so hard. No, no. It was more like, okay, I'll do it. 
you know but it wasn't like i'm like come on man like we got to be a team let's go like let's keep it let's keep you know getting better at this let's go to shows let's let's study out here let's do this and it was more like yeah sure like he was just so like nonchalant about shit and i'm like don't you care about your fucking future dude like aren't you trying to get out of your fucked up situation and like nothing was happening such like, a it just, nerd it wouldn't like what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> I think at that point in my life, if anyone's like, don't you care about your future, dude? No, like, these are internal you thoughts. Are a nerd. These are internal thoughts. Only nerds care about future. <laughs> so let's say I met you, right? And you were just raving all the fucking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would see how, like, that's kind of becoming a detriment to, like, your your finance, to your health. Oh, not to my finance. I was selling drugs. I was making a good <laughs> okay, amount of well, money. Well, fucking A. Okay, well, you're selling drugs, and I'm like, wow, that's going to that's gonna take you away from me, right? You're going to get you're gonna get arrested. Yeah. I think about those things. So I'm like, let me try to steer you away from that. Let's go in this direction. Let's that would have turned me on. Let's try surfing or whatever, you know? But then yeah. you're just like, nah, this is cool. Like, like, Then that's when I'm like, okay, we're growing apart. That's what I'm saying. Right. Uh, why are we even talking about our exes right now? Because <laughs> we're talking about like uh, how we fall in love and if, if going to clubs and meeting people yeah. in their fake facade yeah. is the right place to I wouldn't want to meet anyone. I guess I got lucky too because because I was so sheltered, I, I could only meet guys at school. Like all my relationships started at school. Like every single boyfriend I've had is because it was a school relationship. Which is pretty normal. Which is really cool. I didn't know that that was that normal. Really? Yeah. I think people meet people, the highest percentage of meeting your significant other is- At school? Well, no, the places that you spend your most amount of time. Oh. Um, so whether school, work. Yeah after school activity yeah or family members through friends yeah no i met i met all of them at school and then it was really cool because like we all like we all started like at the same base yeah right because it's like if i met them at a club they could be at any point in their life and i have no idea they yeah. could have just lost a job and that's like the sixth one they lost in two months yeah you know they could have um they all they do is ever club like there's just so much variation in finding someone at a club that it's really cool when I would meet them at school because I'm like, OK, cool. At least I know we're going in the same path. We're both trying to achieve higher learning um, because I'm assuming here that we both want a job that pays pretty good. We want to be professionals and we're like moving in this direction. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess I like the, the fact that I was. Meeting them at school. Yeah, that I would meet them at school. I'd never made the conscious effort. Like, I was not like, it was in a calculated move for me to be like, I only meet guys at school. Thinking back, do you think you should have done even more stuff so you can have a wider range of guys to meet? Or like, I tried. Or, or even... You should have seen the shit I was trying to do since I knew there was shit to do. I just couldn't do it. Damn, like, even starting, bro. yeah, even starting in high school, I would, um, I would, I assigned. Or I I um I applied to be in this ROTC. Uh, like you're gonna be in the military? No, is that the wrong thing I said? Uh, it was like an after school program, but like for photo and stuff. So different. Oh, different ROP. Oh, ROP. Yeah, what does yeah, that yeah. mean? ROP. I don't know what it means, but it's kind of like in job training. Okay. I yeah, I knew it was something RO something. I did ROP for floristry. Yeah. So ROP, I did it because it was after school and it was different high schools. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They all meet, and it was at our school. It was, it was at my school. So I'm like, cool, I can stay later and I can meet people from other schools. Fuck yeah, I'm doing, and I like photo. Like I wanted to, you know, learn more photography and I'm like, hell yeah, I'm gonna do this. So I would try to do anything, I'm telling you, I would try to do anything I fucking could to meet people and to stay out. <laughs> like I tried it all. Do you think knowing that, you think like if Taika was older and he wanted to stay out all the time and like go far and beyond, you'd let him? He'd be like, like he, I wanna go all the way to Riverside. Yeah. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You need to um, explore, do your thing. I mean, within reasonable, like if it's reasonable and I know his friends, I think I'd be more comfortable. I'm like, well, who's driving? You want your friends driving? Fuck no, I'm driving, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it, it would have to be reasonable. I'm not I'm definitely not going to be as strict as my parents are. Um, It's hard because I liked certain aspects of having like, you know, their house arrest because it really did filter the people that I hung out with. Like my mom knew everyone all of my friends names so if i ever go missing she knows exactly where to look like that's the first place to look she knew their parents she knew where they lived so she knew all of that stuff and then she would tell me like i don't like that person and she wasn't really judgmental about stuff she was just like mm, okay that girl looks a little bit you know advanced or whatever but what she wouldn't be like, being, like her titties are popping out 
like she dresses more provocative like she doesn't look like other 13 year olds you know like her yeah. mom like cares a little bit less about what she's doing gives her a little too much freedom yeah you know or, she, or the girl just kind of already starts showing shown that she's just a little bit more sexual like she wants to flirt with guys more or she's talking about guys a little bit more than we are yeah like you can pick up on those things yeah 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 so my mom would pick up on shit like that and she would just say stuff like mm, i don't really like her but that's about it she wouldn't be like i forbid you from hanging out so i, I like i liked how involved my mom was with all of that stuff at the time i fucking hated it because i'm like bitch why are you caught blocking all my fun yeah yeah but now i'm like fuck she really rescued me from a lot of of bad decisions i think my parents did the exact opposite because i'm so rebellious yeah so the more i can't do something i have to do it and if they th i think if they just let me be i probably would have just been like really into skateboarding yeah or art or music well yeah your parents put the pressure on you hard hardcore yeah, yeah. but sorry to stop you here because uh we have another sponsor another sponsor coming through awesome um and this is my personal favorite i already talked about this before and i'm gonna keep talking about it and preaching about it uh third love they make bras y'all so my gentlemen y'all can listen in for your ladies but ladies this is specifically for you they're probably just gonna get turned on no i mean i love it i love this i love this the idea of like shopping from the comfort of your own home um being able to just comfortably um figure out your appropriate bra size like my whole life i never knew how to pick a bra like no one really guided me i don't even know if my mom knows like her bra bra her right bra size um she never like really went out she was just like does it cover your tits cool all right moving on we'll take it but other than that like i never really had anyone telling me like well it shouldn't be flowing from here or if the straps dig into your shoulders too much like that means it's too tight you know um but with third love i love it because um they have the fit finder quiz and it's a few simple questions um to help you find your perfect fit in 60 seconds and it's really cool That's fast. it is it's really fast it just asks you very basic questions like you don't have to know a bunch of titty geometry you know yeah it's just like okay well what is bothering you right now what don't you like about your fit okay does it hurt your back it's a little too tight do you want it to fit this do you want it to you know you push it up here or whatever um and then after 60 seconds they recommend the the right size for you i was super fortunate where whatever i answered um <coughs> excuse me it, when i got my bra it was perfect but just in the event that it's not because we all have lopsided titties or whatever the the thing may be there is a hundred percent fit guarantee so if you get something that you don't like you can always take it back so there's no pressure there um and every customer has 60 days to wear it wash it yes wash it and put it to the test so i mean that right there i'm already sold like what do you really have to lose um and then uh, third love teams up with expert fit stylists that are dedicated to helping you find your perfect fit which is awesome because i'm 35 and i just found my right bra size this is wild you're a growing lady thank you for not judging me babe I uh never and then judge you thank you only and when you do dumb stuff but that's judging okay fine. okay and then uh, there's comfort and quality so hands down the most comfortable bra you'll own and i can attest to that like i wear my bra i'm not wearing it now but I wear it all the time and I freaking absolutely love it. I freaking love it. Like it hugs my boob, but you don't okay, see that. Can you do that one more time? Yeah, it hugs my okay, boob cool. and you don't see the line of the bra. So I got the t-shirt bra and that's one of my favorite bras because I just hate lines anywhere. That's the reason why I opt for wearing thongs all the time because I just don't like seeing like undergarment lines anywhere. Yeah. So I don't see the undergarment uh, and then it secures my boobs do over time <laughs> <laughs> yeah it secures them in place and they feel like so well supported and then i just have okay uh tmi but i have like this my rib cage it sticks out a little bit more on one side than the other so if you can see sorry for everyone that's not watching the video um one of my boobs tends to just drop down a little bit which is this one so this one looks like you can see the curvature here on this one but when i wear my third love bra it brings the other guy into the picture and now it looks like i have these two symmetrical titties i love it so much and i highly recommend it for you ladies um so because you guys listen to us i'm gonna hook you guys up with 50 percent off on your first order so go to third love 
dot com and uh, slash bears. That's B E A W. Now to find your perfect fitting bra. That's third love dot com slash bear B E A W. And you get 50 prints. 15.15% off today. Like, you really have nothing to lose. You guys should go check it out. Okay. Thank you, baby. So what were you telling? So I think... I oh, just know. finding love in the club. Yeah, so I think, like, it's... if I feel like we're, we agree that club isn't the best place to find... It's not the best place, but it's not also, like, a don't do it. Because, I mean, if you want to... If you want, if you don't want like the the super bookwormy type person, and you want someone that's like fun, like it's a good. I I can see why people do it. Yeah, you're finding people at their best in a really good light. Yeah, right. Assuming that they're not like piss drunk. Their best and their fakest. Well, what's the difference with with then finding someone online, like Instagram, for example? Because that's fake as fuck. Yeah, that's fake too. Yeah. Well, but then, but you don't have time. So what I do like is um, these days there's all these dating apps and I think that's pretty cool. Obviously, people are still going to put their fakest foot forward. Yeah. But there's ones that can like I think if like let's say we were to separate, I'd probably pick one that is based off interest. Yeah. So if there's like 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 fishermen only. I don't think I'd ever be on a dating app. Who are you going to meet? You're just going to freaking date all the JK friends? No, I think I would just try to go out. Oh, and try to meet people in person. Yeah. I don't think I can ever do online dating. Not because I'm against it or but anything. But isn't that the same exact thing as meeting people like at the club? Like, where are you going to go out to? To a club and you're going to meet the fakest people. Maybe. Maybe. But I the, think fake, you can... the people aren't fake, but people are putting their fakest foot forward, including myself included. Yeah, well, I'm not already a club going person, so I probably wouldn't meet someone at a club. Where would you meet them? Um, I could probably meet them like... I might take up a, an interest type thing. You know, I might start doing yoga or I might start going to a different gym or um, I might start taking salsa, you know. That's like, pretty cool. I try to do different things that kind of or like start a hiking circle or something and then start hiking. And if I see someone that hikes or you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm just not a very I don't I maybe because I didn't grow up with it, but I just I don't know. Finding it online is is. Like, I'll probably start a conversation and then I might, I guess I would then. What am I talking about? Because I'm trying to really put myself in that You know, statistically, just the amount of people you can meet online, it's going to fast forward your dating time. Yeah. Okay. Then I would never do, I shouldn't say never because you never know, right? But I, it, I can't see myself using a dating site, but something like Instagram, I probably would. Instagram would probably be the most. What's the difference between that and a dating? Because I, the Instagram, you might blindside someone they might just be like dude i'm just fucking making these pots and you want to hit me up and send me these dick pics is weird mm. <laughs> but if you went to like potters only yeah then it's just pottery makers trying to fuck other pottery makers yeah then they're on there they're like i'm putting up this vase because i want someone to fuck me <laughs> <laughs> you know it's different that's but, funny yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bikini. yeah i don't know I think there's just more angles on a on an Instagram page that you can see, right? Like you can see the comments that they make. You can see how they interact and the you know with their friends, and then it's cool because like now you can oh you can find a truer self. Yeah, and then you can play detective a little bit. Girls are really good at this shit. Yeah. Um, and then you can see who tagged them. You know, you can see all the photos that they're tagged in, and then you'll look. And uh, oh, let me see what their friends are doing, and then you can go to their friends page and see what their friends. I sound fucking crazy, but. This makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> you can see what their friends are doing. And then, because um, this is how I find like influencers and stuff that we want to work with either for Barbell or for JK. Like I do some investigative work. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you just see like what their friends are doing. You know, how they carry themselves. Like are all their friends going like, fuck this, fuck that, bitches ain't shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like are they yeah. saying stuff like that? Then that kind of says a lot about, you know, the person that you're kind of interested in. Yeah. So I, that's why I would probably not want to do dating apps. Yeah. I think one of the, like, as I get older, when I was younger, I didn't quite understand, um, like, putting so much passion into things. Like, you know how you'll have, like, the guy that's, like, he might be a recreational fencer or something, right? And then the parents really push him. And he gets into the Junior Olympics, and he just keeps pushing him. And then uh, sometimes you're just like, wait, do you even care about fencing if you do awesome? But if not, like, why are you going so niche into something and pushing yourself so hard? 
but the older that I get and I, I, I realize that people that really stimulate me are people that have a passion, e either a high level of drive or they've achieved an elite level of success. Me too. And then so when I like, I think that's why I'm so fascinated with like Navy SEALs and like uh, special forces dudes because they're the elite of the elite, like in terms of being a human oh, okay. being. Okay, then not me. <laughs> no, like in terms of like intellectual, like the embodiment of a intellectually elite person and physically elite person in one individual, like that, that's what you find is a Navy because they're fucking smart and they're yeah. crazy, right? And then so like, I think um, that's why I'm attracted to them because i, I, I like, <laughs> excuse me <laughs> not in that way but like but i think like um i can relate to them on the certain drive and a certain level of uh like so you want to date a navy seal no like the type of like why are we talking about navy seals like and the, now you're salivating no no the, <laughs> god damn it like the type of type of intrigue that uh we both have like for example yeah like, but how do you relate that back to a relationship i'm confused Oh, so uh, <laughs> when, growing up, it seems like you just want to talk about Navy SEAL. No, what the <laughs> no, fuck? no, so growing up, my parents <coughs> they would always try to push uh, yeah. me, right? Like, yeah. And then my even my grandparents didn't understand how hard they pushed me, and then they're like, "What do you want them to do? Go to Harvard?" And then it's like, "Yeah, duh." <laughs> I, All right. I think my mom did want me to go to Harvard, right. but from like a villager's mindset, like my grandparents, they're probably like, "Why does he have to be at the best?" Yep. And then it's because once you get there, the the circle of people you surround yourself in, yeah, it's way different. Like when I went to community college, the type of people that I have, there might be like a couple of diamonds in the rough. And then by the time I got to UCLA, they're all diamonds. Yeah. Like the top of the handful of top people in each of my class. When I go to when I went to UCLA, everyone is of that caliber. That's the average. And then there's even people that are smarter beyond belief that I'm like, what the fuck? There's guys and girls like this. This is yeah. insane. Yeah. And then, so I think like, uh, and as, as you change your circle, you change who you are, who you are and the yeah. access that you have. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh shit, I can have this type of person that for like a fine love like and this partner. type of people. Yeah. yeah. It's, that was one thing I really tried. So, I keep kind of saying this a lot and it's kind of becoming annoying, but because I was so sheltered, um, I started understanding the importance of the caliber that you sur uh, the caliber of people you surround yourself with and how that rubs off, you know, through osmosis. Yeah. Um, like who, who, how that shapes you to be. So, because I figured that out, even though I'm sure my parents probably knew the same, um, when it was time for my sister, my little sister to now start considering colleges, she wanted to go to Japan and she wanted to go, you know, a college out of state and stuff. And again, they were kind of, you know, putting their finger down and going like, or their foot down and kind of going like, nah, like I'm going to keep you under my thumb. Like you're going to stay here. You're not, you, you don't go anywhere. And I really tried to explain to my dad at least where I'm like, Hey man, like, like I get it. You're trying to shelter and protect us. I'm like, but the caliber of people that she's surrounding herself with now here in East LA, not to throw shade, it's just not the best, you know, like you want her to be around people that have traveled the world, people that, you know, come from money, people that come from just different, um, different walks of life so that she can get exposed to all of that. And now she has like this really cool pool of like knowledge and, and people that she can like learn from and grow from, you know? And, and yeah. I think it's really, really important to, to throw yourself in that situation too where if like, and I've said this a million times too, where I always try to be the dumbest person in the room, well, at least in my circle. Like I try to put myself in a circle where I don't have much to say because I'm just such a noob. Yeah. Yeah, because if you know everything or, you know, if you're like smarter than most of them there, then I mean, how much not, and don't take this as I'm like saying like use people, not at all, but like how much are you gaining from them and how much are they gaining from you, you know? At what point did you find out your parents are stupid as fuck? I never think they're stupid as fuck. I've never once thought my parents were stupid so as you fuck. Haven't, you haven't been there yet? That's sad. <laughs> no, I just think our strengths lie in different places. Like, I I respect my parents so much. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're I, mean, dumb. I respect my parents, too. Yeah, I'm not saying you don't. But they're fucking dumb, though. <laughs> um, uh, I just think they just come from a different time. You know, like, I've... Which I've, makes them stupid. 
<laughs> okay, fine. I mean, there's gonna be a point in time where Taika, in high school. where Taika's like, exactly. There's gonna be a point in time where Taika's like, damn. My mom is stupid as fuck. Bart and Gio are fucking dumb. I hope he never calls me Bart and Gio. I know. I mean, there's <laughs> gonna be a point in time where our listeners are like, like I think what sucks is, uh, I think like anytime you hit that stagnant, which a lot of people in their career, there's that, like you you work hard to you that plateau. management position or whatever, and then you you have like a 10, 20 year. You're cruising, you know, you're happy, you're, you're comfortable at work, you don't take on any more responsibility, your stress management is really good, but because of that, you're also not growing for 20 years, and then you're surrounded by the same people for 20 years, you stop growing, versus I think the minute you hit college, you meet thousands of people from all over the world, and yeah. your brain just explodes, and then all of a sudden, I find out how ignorant, like my, my dad was telling me to stay away from Indian people because they all smell like curry, and what then- does that mean? Why, why stay away from them? Now? I don't know. And then I'm like, how many Indian people do you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like when he first, it just sounded ignorant already the first time he said it. He probably didn't even, never even met an Indian person. And he probably s saw that in like a stupid movie, like a stupid racist joke. And then like the minute I meet way more Indian people and they don't all smell like curry. I'm like, my dad's fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah, my parents are <laughs> No, my parents aren't that dumb. My mom uh, is very, my mom and dad are very small town minded, but they weren't dumb. <laughs> but what do they think Indian people smell like? <coughs> we never talked about Indian people. <laughs> Maybe my dad's actually smarter because he knows that Indian people exist. No, my, what the fuck? My parents know the Indian people <laughs> exist. Kidding. What the fuck? <laughs> my mom was a fucking teacher. Like she's taught like so many different nationalities. She knows yeah. that these people exist. Fine. And she never smelled any of them? I'm sure she smelled them, but she's not going to say some dumb I'm shit. I'm just like kidding. That. I know. I know. I'm just kidding. You're so annoying. <laughs> you, so, you just want to have sex with me right now. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but no, I think, yeah, I think it's really important to, I guess when you're meeting someone, just to know what it is that you're looking for and just to be fucking honest with yourself. Like if you're trying to fuck, just be like, I'm trying to fuck, you know, like maybe you not might, might not want to say that to the person. That's what I think people mess up a lot. Because they just want to fuck? No, it's, oh. they're not real to themselves. So they have what they want. You know want. how hard it is to be real with I yourself? Know, it's really it's hard. fucking it's hard. Really hard. But this is what they want, <laughs> and this is where their morals lie. And I think what happens is instead of like facing the facts for what they are, they try to like convince themselves. I think everyone does Because people think that it's bad that you just want to fuck. Yeah, and they, they try to convince and themselves it's not bad. It's why okay. they need it or whatever. And then later on, uh, when their mind's clear, they're like, oh, wait. Why is this happening? And it's because you lied to yourself. Yeah, it is. And, and that happens so much. It does. And I've been victim to that because I'm like, I have to. Everybody cause it's like, has. It's like, I fine. I know what I want. But then I really started analyzing what I want. And I'm like, well, wait, do I really want that? Is it because of, you know, the pressure here? Or is it because I know that this person's going to think this about me? Yeah. And then you kind of start like hiding your own truth, not on purpose, but it's just because you think that you're a bad person for having this truth or this thought. And when it's like, it's not bad. It's not hurting anyone. It's just not aligned with how someone else might view it or someone's view of you might change, which is it that really that bad? That's why I think sometimes being superficial is actually good. Cause at least you're real. What kind of superficial, like throwing salt over your shoulders, superficial or like fake superficial. No, like a guy, a guy that's like, Oh, I like girls with big titties or fat oh, ass. Oh, Oh, and then there's, you know, there's girls that go, you fucking dog, you, what are we just pieces of meat? And then those same girls fucking see a guy and they're like, Oh my God, did you see his fucking ass? I love a big dick. Yeah. It's like, what's the difference? But, to me, those are some of the most honest statements. I would love that. And and rather than oh oh that girl she's she's so charitable. Nah, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> fuck you and your fake shit. Yeah. Like that's why I so the the guy I dated before you that's why I liked him because he was just that a big dick. <laughs> no. Because oh. he was just this crass dude that I knew watched porn and fucking like flirted with a bunch of girls. Yeah. But I'm like cool. That's your fucking truth, and, and I admired that. Yeah. yeah, and I admired that. Cause I'm like, I don't, I admire your honesty. I mean, I don't admire you being so flirtatious. I don't like that, but at least you're upfront with it and I know what it is. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool. I can work with that. Like, give me some, like, let me see your problems on the table. Let me see if I want, if I want it or not. Not like I'm squeaky clean. This table is fucking perfect. I got nothing. And then you get together and then there's all this fucking bullshit that you're like, I just got duped. But most people don't present the, most people present the squeaky clean. They have to. Yeah, you have to, you know? That's why I like me some fucking dysfunctional people like you. I'm not dysfunctional, am I? Oh my God. 
we just had like the fucking craziest fucking relationship in our life and you're gonna say you're not crazy your parents are crazy would you agree to that oh yeah some of that shit rubbed off oh yeah right there we go (laughs) there we go and i'm sure i got fucking daddy issues and mommy issues and middle child issues like who doesn't right yeah and i didn't present all my shit to you on the table i don't even know what all my shit is to be honest i knew all your (laughs) shit Really? What's all my shit? No, the, the minute that we were starting hanging out as friends. And What's all my shit? And you had resting bitch face. I was like, all right, she already got some shit. I'm like, why is she so defensive? <laughs> there we go. I She's put like, it on the I'm table. Like, why is she so defensive all the fucking time for no fucking reason? Because I fucking hate people. And I'm like, damn, she got a really, I'm just lonely. And then, but then that when, that's when we had that snowboard trip and he started opening up. I'm like, damn, she's not a bitch on the inside. I'm not a bitch. I'm like, she's very cuny. I am very cuny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's awesome. It's hard. And I know it's easy for me to be like. Uh, just be honest bitch. no just be oh. honest and like present your shit you know um but it's hard it's like a hard fucking thing you have to face like all right i am a bitch all right well why am i a bitch <laughs> you know it's hard and i think that's why i really admire the people that can just be so upfront and so vul- uh, vulnerable with with things that i see as shortcomings and i think those people that i once they do like tiff's one of those people like she knows what her shortcomings are and she's like this is my shortcoming here you go and I'm like, I like that. Yeah. Like, cool. Like, you're so open. Like, I admire that about you. Like, like I want to be that way. I have gonorrhea. <laughs> there it is. We had someone say that their fucking pussy looks like the Grinch. And I'm oh, like, yeah. oh, my God. I like that. Now I'm close to you. Why? Let's talk about your Grinch like, pussy. Damn, her pussy was green? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, like, you know what you're getting yourself into. At that point, you can make a very solid decision. Do I want to befriend this person or do I, like, not? You know, and then you just got a really open thing. Yeah. What about our final sponsor? Is it coming to that time? It is. Oh, crazy. It always comes. I know this Dang, hour just goes so by so fast. I know. I feel like we just scratched the surface on this. Yeah. Well, I want to know what you guys think. Do you guys think the club is the best place to meet people? Or where do you feel like you should meet people? Or not where you should, but where you think where the ideal, best place to yeah. meet people is. Yeah. Where is that place? And uh, shout outs to Open Fit. Shout outs to Third Love for sponsoring. Yes. And then Barbell Brigade, our very own company. Thank Yay. you for sponsoring us too. And if you guys want to find uh, fitness apparel that looks good in the gym, on the streets, or in people's vlogs and on and people's just Instagrams. And screams a dope motto. Yeah. Dominate, Dominate humbly. humbly. Go check it out. Barbellbrigade.com. Link in the description below. And uh, let us know. Let us know for our next podcast. If you want to hear more relationship stuff. Business, Maybe more business, family, family, history, girl, insight guy stuff. Yeah. Girl problems, guy problems. Yeah. Uh, how I used to have to climb a tree to bust nuts like this. Oh, you've talked about that quite a bit now. Yeah. But there's a <laughs> lot of different, you know, things that people are interested in and maybe they don't feel like they know someone that they can talk to. Um, if, maybe if your sister turned you on or something like let me ask. Is that weird? Maybe. I it's don't know. very weird. I don't, I don't, have a don't sis- submit it. I don't have a sister, don't so submit that. I, I don't, can't I, really comment yeah, on that. I, but I have a brother, not interested. <laughs> but I'm down <laughs> to talk about anything, and I'm down to be as honest as possible. So let us know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next mm-hmm. time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>